Welcome to Final Element Methods. During this tutorial, the strong form Galerkian will be used to solve the equation of the advection diffusion uh, problem um, in 1D. The conservation principle of intermaterial or energy in a 1D model with a control volume delta x is described by this differential equation. The first term is related with the advention term and is the derivative of respect, with respect to x of the area um, A, which is the cross-section area, U, which is the velocity of the fluid, which only varies along x, theta, which is the concentration of the species or energy, plus a second term, which is related with the diffusion term, which is the diffusion term. And this is the derivative with respect to x of the product of a times the diffusion, which is q, minus um, any source s. When the moving fluid is incompressible, the first term which is the advention term, A is modified. So this, is, this only apply for incompressible fluids. So this first term becomes AU d theta dx. And if the second term um, or the diffusion is considered linear, uh, the variation is considered linear with respect to the, to the theta dx, if it's linear, we can rewrite the second term as the product between the area, the diff diffusivity k and the theta dx. In this problem, two boundary conditions are identified. The two boundary conditions are the essential boundary condition related with the primary variable theta and the natural boundary condition related with the, with the diffusion term. So that would be minus k d theta dx we can say that this is equal to Q bar, all right? One application of the advection um, diffusion equation is in mass transport. Assuming constant area, the equation above um, or not, I mean, this question, the question about can be um, modified for this, uh, for this application. So it can describe um, the steady state distribution of dilute material in the surroundings. So the differential equation becomes U, this is still the velocity um, times uh, the theta dx minus d dx of the diffusion term, but this times the diffusivity is called d, and we have a second, a third term, which is the product of kr, which is the reaction rate that accounts for the reaction between the diluted species and its surroundings times um, the concentration of the dilute material theta. And this is equal to M, and M is the external source of mass. So we can see that this term here 
um, d, d theta dx is the flux of material. Is the flux of the material. And it's important because it will be related with the natural boundary condition for our, for our, our problem. All right, so let's now solve a problem of mass transport by the approximate theory of a strong form galerie. So in a one dimensional aquifer, um, is model using a control laboratory experiment. The aquifer has constant area and length one, millimeter, one meter and contaminated fluid moving through it. A chemical contaminant is measured to have a concentration of zero at x equals zero, which is the essential boundary condition. The contaminant reacts with its surroundings with rate constant Kr as it moves through the aquifer. It is known that the chemical substance, substance uh, will diffuse in the medium with diffusion D and the flux of the material is also known at X equals one meter. So we want to compute the steady state distribution of chemical contaminant in the aquifer using the strong form galerie. For simplicity, we're gonna assume that the velocity of the fluid is constant. So starting from the strong form um, of the problem, which is u theta prime minus d theta double prime plus kr theta equal to zero, we identify the two boundary conditions. So the essential boundary condition um, is, the, is theta at zero equal to zero. And the natural boundary condition is D times theta prime at L equals to Q bar, All right? So once this is done, we can move to calculate our approximate function. So to calculate the approximate function, we start um, from we start from the trial function first, right? So the trial function would be of this form: w tilde x equal to a zero plus a one x over l plus a two x over l to the square. We need to enforce boundary conditions. So if we enforce boundary conditions, uh, let's put it here, enforce boundary conditions. So if we enforce boundary conditions, the essential boundary condition um, tells us that W tilde at zero is equal to zero which means that A zero is equal to zero. So we can rewrite W tilde X as A one times X over L plus A two X over L to the square. Since the next step is to enforce the natural boundary condition and the natural boundary condition is related with the derivative of W Let's calculate the derivative of W tilde. So the derivative um, will be A1 over L plus two A2 X over L times one over L. All right, so let's evaluate now um, W tilde prime at L. So from the evaluation, we got that A1 over L plus 2A2 over L 
um, is equal to Q bar. Let's, let's put this Q bar by A by L divided by L. So we can have A1. Uh, one second. Let's put it down there. So we can have that A1 um, a, in terms of A2 um, is equal to Q bar minus 2A2. Good, so now our child function in terms of A, A2 Uh, will be would be q bar minus two a two all times x over l plus a two x times x over l to the square. So if we group uh, the terms with uh, with a two, we get that q bar. Uh, x over L plus A2 times X over L to the square minus two times X over L is our approximate function. Now we can, uh, our trial function. Now we can move, once we have the trial function, we can move to define our approximate function function theta tilde. So theta tilde um, with two terms will be of this form. The first term is Q bar X over L. This is related with phi naught, right? The second term is uh, with, the con with the constant C1 times the first basis function. The basis function uh, looks like this. So this is the first basis function, phi one. And the last term is related with the second basis function. So that would be x over L to the cube minus three over two x L to the square. And this is related with the second basis function. P2. All right, so um, now that we define our approximate function, we need to check that the approximate function theta tilde x satisfy all the boundary conditions. So in our case, essential a natural boundary condition. We need to verify that the, the, the function is complete, a smooth, continuous, and we can take as many derivatives as we want without ending in a function equal to zero. So uh, differentiate. All right. So now we can calculate at our residual, our tilde, um, as a function of theta tilde, right? So our residual R tilde would be U times theta tilde prime 
minus D theta double, theta tilde double prime plus KR theta tilde. Since we want, we, we look for minimize um, this residual uh, through the average. So we integrate with respect to X, so from zero to L, the product between the residual R tilde X and the weighted function Vx. So we're looking for solutions where um, Vx is um, orthogonal with respect to R tilde. Now we know that this uh, weighted function is related with um, the basis functions phi one and phi two. So it means that this equation evaluated um, at the basis functions uh, will, will, um, will lead to um, two equations, right? So the first equation, it's u times theta tilde prime minus d theta tilde double prime plus kr theta tilde. Which is not should be normal, or uh, orthogonal. Sorry, orthogonal with respect to phi one, the first basis function, and the second equation would be u theta tilde prime minus d theta tilde double prime is exactly the same r tilde as the one in the first equation times phi two dx equal to zero. All right, so we have two equations. We have two unknowns. Which are C1 and C2. So we can solve for these two unknowns. This plot shows that this exact solution in yellow Um, or let's say that <laughs> the, 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 the solution by the strong form Galerkian in blue um, is fairly um, close to the exact solution, right? It's, it's pretty decent, the, the, the approximation. So we have shown that um, the function diffusion problem for 1D models using the approximate theory of the strong form Galerkian, where the natural and the essential boundary conditions are um, enforced um, pretty much matches uh, the exact solution of the mass transport problem. 